starting another project and this one is a core box plane so I have some of the major components for it already fabricated it is a ton of work to do I need to film now so that as I advance um, I have something to show because it's 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 gonna not be in this condition for very long so there's two sides if anybody doesn't know what a core box plane is it's a plane that pattern makers would use to make a channel so that they could cast basically a round object um, it's made it's usually used to make patterns for foundry work that's the principle of it it's a very archaic plane um, back in the day, there really weren't that many that were made. I don't have one. I'm, I've never used one before. I don't have one to copy, but I know the principles behind it. So anyway, what I have here are two sides. This is, pine, uh, this is maple, and they're going to be mitered together so that they form a right angle. So that would be like this okay and each side is going to be the same dimension then let's see if I could use, use this clamp to hold up one of the sides anyway um, let's see if I use this, this clamp to hold this up so you'll have a side like that, you'll have another side like this, then I have the handle, the tote, and the tote is going to be shaped like this. This has a T-nut buried in it, and then there's a hole bored through here, and I'm going to use this quarter twenty screw to hold the blade in place. So I'm going to pick a location for this, and I'm going to mitre the bottom corner of this tote so that it rests on as I'm facing this it will be the left side of the core box plane the reason I'm making it on the left is because I want the entire blade see I take out, take out this bolt so the, the blade is going to rest right on right on the face of the tote like that okay and then I'm gonna put a, a slot in here and bolt the blade in place and the slot will enable me to adjust the length of the the blade as I sharpen it and it gets shorter so it's gonna be like this but what I want is I want the cutting face of the blade to be on uh, the right the left side of the plane and I'm gonna I'm going to create a small shift in it so that the blade doesn't come just to a point. There's actually going to be a tiny whisker on the other side so the, the point of the blade will be about an eighth of an inch from the right hand edge of the blade. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to be easy to fabricate the blade and also probably it will be stronger because rather than the blade coming to a point it'll actually have a little bit of mass behind it so the cutting corner will be just off the side of the blade um, the other thing that I want to be able to do is I want to be able to clamp straight edges to this to this face as I'm operating the plane so what I would do is I would put a straight edge like this on the back end of it obviously it would have to be slightly longer than the plane this is going to end up being about 15 inches long so let's say I had a 17 inch long straight edge and then what I would do is put a clamp right here and set it like that and then operate the plane with the straight edge clamped in place on this location on the inside of the plane I'm going to have a strip of tool steel so that it, it, the clamp will bear on top of the steel and I won't have the clamp scarring up the inside of the plane 
So I'm going to be doing that on each end. And this will only be basically for a right hand operator. So the straight edge and all the clamping will only be done from the left side of the plane. And then the plane will sweep like this as it cuts the arc. Uh, unlike some of the older planes where the, um, the bottom of the plane looked more like this. And then you could sweep in both directions because you had equal, equal cutting on, on both sides of the corner of the plane. I'm not going to make this like that. So, oh, and then the other thing is the, the outside corner, this outside corner of the core box plane is going to take some wear. That's the corner that defines the arc that the plane cuts. So what I'm going to do is assemble the plane. I have to fabricate all the pieces, assemble the plane, make the throat for the blade and do all that other work and then I'm going to create a rabbit in the bottom the bottom outside corner of the plane and I'm going to put a piece of tool steel along the entire corner and then that way that that reinforcement will be the wear point for the entire corner It's basically going to be like boxing but it's going to be a piece of steel that should give you give me uh, a lot of precision in terms of being able to measure and cut a really good arc. In terms of why you would make a plane like this, uh, first of all it's going to be a challenge because I don't have one to copy. So there's a little bit of engineering and sort of uh, wizardry involved in doing this. The other two reasons are that I'm going to have at least two plane projects where I'm going to use the core box plane to fabricate the other planes. And I might even use the core box plane to make crown molding. We'll get to that way into the future. But for right now, I want to concentrate on making this. So. As I move along, I will stop and film different segments, but I have to film here because this is going to start rapidly looking like something completely different. So these are the basic pieces that I have right now. There's a lot of work to do. And when we come back, we'll have something more to see, and then eventually we'll have a really neat core box plane. So I have the tote for the core box plane. I'm going to embed a T-nut behind the blade ramp and I'm going to put a bolt right through the middle of the blade and that's how I'm going to keep the blade in place. But I need to draw the nut into the body of the tote so that it'll stay fixed in place. So it's got those little bobs on it so I'm going to just draw it in and I'm going to use this quarter twenty bolt to do the job. Alright, let's try out this rabbit. Let's see how this works.
did some milling on the pieces for the core box plane. They're going to go together like this. This will be a right angle in here. And uh, I put the miter on the tote. You can see the way that looks. So what I want to do is, now right, right now, the right side of the tote is the center of the plane. I want to shift it to the right an eighth of an inch. So, I think I figured out a way to get that angle. I got some sticks that are going to give me a parallel line off that, and then I'll use the bevel gauge to get this angle. I'm going to set these wear strips into the plane with epoxy. I like to use five minute epoxy. So what I did was I scuffed up the steel, drilled some holes in it real shallow and then I did the same thing to the wood so uh, it's not two smooth surfaces that I'm trying to join together because I'm going to glue the tote onto the plane. Hopefully this works. Alright, I'm going to glue up the second side to the tote and the first side. So I got some blocks to keep everything square and I milled the edge of this and tuned it so that it will receive the other piece.
pretty close. So I did some assembly. Uh, everything is looking good. I have a block right here already glued in place. Now I'm going to add two more blocks and they're going to be right on each side of the of the handle and basically join the handle to the two sides and keep the sides from flexing because I'm going to true up the sides and uh, they need to be perfectly straight and perfectly square. So now I'm going to open up the slot in the back of the blade for the core box plane. This is the iron and I need a slot so that I can anchor it to the plane but be able to slide it up and down and adjust the depth of the cut and as the blade gets shorter if I sharpen it drop it down slightly. So can't have a hole you need a slot. So I laid it out on the other side magic marker drilled a couple of holes then I passed the tungsten rod through the through the hole and now I'm gonna open it up and I'll file it square and uh, I have a cover plate for it so you'll never see this opening underneath the cover plate but we'll go ahead and cut this let me get my Okay, that looks good. All right, let's see if the blade fits, if the slot is the proper size and the length and all. Let's let's give this all a spin. So I got a cover plate for it. I guess this will be like a stabilizer, something to uh, cover the slot and keep the blade. From moving around. All right, so the slot's big enough. That'll work. Everything looks good. And the lengths look good. This isn't too long, too short. So from the top. That's how that looks. And then from the bottom, okay, that's way too long. Let's adjust it. Yeah, that'll be fine. So this blade. This blade only sticks out much, much less than even that, but that's the idea. So I'll shape that with the bench grinder. And then let me just show everybody the shift in the blade that I created. That's this corner right here see that so from the front that's the way it looks that'll all be shaped but the idea is to not have the point right on the side of the blade so that came out exactly the way I wanted so everything is looking good so I'm gonna pin these sections of brass rod into the 
wear strip. Got some epoxy here, shouldn't need that much. So, these were all, all the pins were sanded with 100 grit, roughed them up, and then cleaned with alcohol. So make sure that there's no grease or uh, anything else on them that would interrupt the bond between the wood, the steel, and the brass. This little, the ends of these little pins sticking out like that. That's all it is. It's a one eighth pin. This is this is what it looks like from the side. So this rabbit was created by hand, right through the mitre of the two pieces and then this is the wear strip that's on the end of the other piece this will be trimmed with a file the end will be trimmed with a file and so this is the other side it came out pretty good all right everybody get a sneak peek at what that looks like so we'll clean up let this sit for a few hours even though it's five minute epoxy we'll let it set up real good before I do anything else with it so I flipped this around now I have the escapement side of the plane facing up and what I'm gonna do is lay out the little section of this wear strip that I have to file away so I have my bevel gauge set up and I'm just going to run a scribe line down there on that and then back a little bit more. That'll be the throat. And that should be good enough. Just as a rough guide, I like to keep it a little crispy looking rather than have the cuts wander all over the place so now this is a little bit awkward to film all this alright so this file this file is too thick so go to something else try this file this is a thinner file alright Okay, I want to go over this blade a little bit for the core box plane. So first off, let me do a little bragging. I wanted a 1 8 offset on this clipped corner so I have a piece of 1 8 steel and when I hold it flush to the edge, I don't know if you could see that, but that corner is right one eighth off the corner so that's exactly what I want I'm very happy about that now the other thing that I did just to show everybody how I laid this this out I took black magic marker and I blacked out both faces of the blade uh, before and after it was sharpened so I did this once before it was heat street treated and then after again the final grinding so what I did was I placed it in the plane and then on the I guess you would call it the non-beveled side the flat side 
I scribed the line. Then I took my bevel gauge and I set the bevel gauge to that to that scribed line on the flat face like that. Then what I did was I turned the bevel gauge over and the same angle is on the clipped corner. So then from the small corner I did the same the same angle. It's the same geometry. So that's how I got the two angles. Then what I did was I took my oh and I also put a little black on the edges. Then I set my I grind to a 25 degree bevel. So what I did was I set my protractor to a 25, de 25 degree angle and I set the protractor up on that scribed line that I just made and then I scribed back to the back along the edge to the back of the blade on both edges and then using the same bevel gauge setting I went to the back and then I set the two lines that are further back now for the 25 degree bevel so I did that so that now and, when, and then I ground everything freehand to those scribe lines so on the back of it you have that this is all done freehand there's no jigs there's no nothing but I can see the line on the black magic marker on the back on both both bevels and the same thing on the front and then once I get it to that point then I put it back in the plane set it up and then from there I can tune it with the stones and I just took it off the stones you could see this went to only 800 it's gonna I'm probably only gonna be cutting about I'd say no more than about 3 eighths of an inch on the tip so it's a very small cut and there'll be nothing on the other side that's the way this plane works so it's not really a big deal you don't need any fancy jigs or anything uh, if there's any problems I could always take this to 1200 I don't think it's going to be a big deal so then what I did was I also I cut off the uh, the brass studs in this edge and I also filed the mouth in the wear edge so you got that going so now when this this goes in like this and that's the, that's the blade right in there like that so we'll set this up now see how this works Just see a little tiny whisker. Little tiny whisker of this blade coming up right through there. That's all it's going to cut. So if I have to, I can expand this mouth a little bit. but I'm very happy with the way everything came out so far now the rest of this is going to be final sanding and then I'm going to run a test on this the wear strip came out very nice for the clamps everything's been sanded flush like I said there's a little bit of filed flush there's a little bit of sanding here you could also see again on the end you have the end of the wear strip here and the end of the wear strip here and then that's how it looks so everything is pretty straight pretty flat pretty crispy um, I think you need all this 
you need this good geometry in order to create um, reliable cylindrical cuts so I'm gonna stop right here and uh, plan my next few moves just wanted to show everybody what's going on right here at this stage so there's one thing I realized that I did which I have to include in this video I made a second blade the first blade is this one there's a second one where I took out the I, I just have a, a, the, a small section of the tip the reason why is because you cannot have a section of the blade that let's see if I could film this properly let's see as it comes in like this see that that section of the blade if that was an actual cutting face right there it would cut off the working corner that you need to guide the plane so as you were working you would be ruining the piece sliding it so in this case because this this radius is a little on the small side I was able to use just a small portion of this modified blade so from here back it's ground below the surface the other reason you need that is because if I was going to set this straight edge up here I wouldn't want the blade to collide with the straight edge so I think that pretty much makes sense now this blade if I didn't have the middle of this hogged out then this blade wouldn't be deep enough to cut and sweep through this curve so I would have to hog out the middle of this which I had already done from my previous tests but if this was just square I would have to hog out the middle in order to be able to use this blade to complete the sweep through the cut. So I hope that all makes sense and we'll just continue on with the rest of the video and the rest of the editing and everything else. So let's give the core box plane a spin. I'm finding it a little difficult to manage I've gone through this process a couple of times let's see if we could get a decent cut Okay, so we got a little step going. Let me come back the other way. Okay, now let me take off the, uh, the straight edge and see if I could work off the steps that I just created.
Okay. This is this came out pretty clean. That's one pass with everything. That's pretty clean. This could be just shaped, this could be just cleaned up with sandpaper at this point. So this is how you cut. This is the, dem the first demonstration of my new core box plane. So I'm very happy with the way this came out. All right, everybody. There's still a lot more to do with this plane, but this is a good this is a good demonstration. This is a good um, what do they call it? Proof of concept. Here you go. All right, everybody. Stay strong.